All right, so shout out to Brian Cooley. I think I said it right. Um, I've been following this gentleman for longer than I can remember. Um, and I guess this year is a big deal for electric cars. And some of these are actually really cool. cars with a plug are going to hit the market. You may never see a flurry like this again in your life. So let's run down the 2022 schedule. This might be the most interesting year of them all. That Nissan actually does look really cool. Now it should go without saying that you've noticed the hottest thing in electric cars is electric trucks. Started with the Ford F-150 Lightning. Now that vehicle is in pre-orders. It'll start delivering in 2022. Most notable are the fact that it's got a low base of 40,000. That does look really, really cool. That price, of course. And it's so normal. It looks and feels like a regular F-150, a key strategy from Ford. It's got incredible specs for power and performance, for towing, and for being gouged at the dealership. Ford's having to rein in their dealers who know the pre-order list is long and people are going to be impatient. So as they arrive, you're going to see some extra markup, which is too bad because that blunts one of its key features, which is a very affordable price, at least in terms of its value. But it has kicked off the era of the electric pickup. Uh, now, by the time the dealer at the Ford shop uh, calls and says your electric F-150 is in, you may already be at the point where you can shop for an electric Silverado, even though they don't arrive till mid to late 20. That looks so good. That's going to have 400 miles of range and GM. No, I'm just saying, like here, that shot right there. That reminds me of, I don't know if anyone watched the second Matrix when they did uh the Denali's, but this is like, to me, this looks like better. That's all I'm saying. Mid to late 23, that's going to have 400 miles of range and GM's all new impressive Ultium battery and electric system. This is completely different from the Chevy Bolt that is currently giving the division a black eye. You might also notice that the Silverado is going to have pretty advanced super cruise driving automation and what they call Ultify cloud connected services. It's going to be an interesting comparison compared to the more derivative electric F-150. Then you ask, what about Ram? Much further in the future, an electric Ram truck's not expected until 2024. So we have no specs or much to talk I about I think it's right going to now. be. Now let's get to the alternative. I hope, it, I hope it's cool. Town, looking a little wobbly as it has in the past. CEO and CFO resigned in 2021 over overstating allegations about the amount of interest they had in their vehicles and perhaps a little bit of a cash issue. And then there's Tesla's Cybertruck, now delayed. Look, I'm actually glad it's delayed because I can't afford to get my Cybertruck right now. So I appreciate that, Elon. Shout out to you, sir. Q1 of 23, a vehicle that you thought was going to be in this video for delivery in 22. And I suspect that Q123 is not the last delay we'll see for the Cybertruck. It's okay with me. The longer it takes for that ugly thing to be on the road, the <laughs> I'm getting one. Ah. Can anyone make electric more normal than Toyota? Maybe not, but they'd have to have an electric car first. And that will be arriving in the mainstream sense for the first time with something called the BZ4X. I don't get it either. It makes no sense. Who's going to walk in and remember or ask for that name at the dealership? We'll see what happens. I do hope it's available all in one color and not just with those contrasting fenders I see in most photos, which remind me of the cheap black plastic bumpers on the early BMW X3. When the BZ4X does arrive, though, it's going to kick off a vehicle that's going to be aimed at the sweet spot of the American car buyer, the compact crossover. This will be Toyota's first mainstream battery electric vehicle. They're very familiar with electrification, but it's all been on the hybrid side for the most part. The BZ4X will have 250 miles of range in a front-wheel drive configuration. I believe the all-wheel drive range is still TBD as of today. Now, the BZ4X will have two other versions from Stablemates or Partners. There will be the Subaru Solterra, That's which cool. will be as similar as its BRZ is to the Toyota 86 in the sports car. That's really smart. I, I then appreciate they're doing that. there may be a Lexus derivative. This is still a little murky, but they may pick up the BZ4X platform in general in size and turn that into a pure electric compact Lexus crossover. I hope they then do that. the Nissan Aria, probably prettier than anything you ever thought would wear. That's a cool color, too. Which is really good. 
also costs more than probably anything you thought would wear a Nissan bag. <clears throat> Starting at 47 or so. Well, hold on. There was a car I wanted that Nissan still makes that costs over $100,000, sir. It's in production. Oh, and the sound is that's uh, Last Human's Garage. Also, another gentleman I've been following longer than I can remember. Well, like so many others, we have 300 mile range vehicle, though that does drop to 265 miles if you get the high performance all wheel drive version. And it should also have a new Nissan semi autonomous driving mode that I hear is going to be pretty impressive. Now, BMW is another one of the standard bearers when it comes to making a truly great Dude. crossover. And in this case, the iX50 is the one to think about. This would be roughly an electrified wow. X5, but it's not an X5. They didn't just retrofit another vehicle. Look at that. Look at that. That looks so good. Built this one from the ground up. Whole different platform, chassis, construction, everything. Style that looks good right there, too. A little bit love it or hate it, especially around the rear quarters or around the front with perhaps the largest expression of BMW's nice. grill design. Very nice. But hey, this is a company that survived the bangle butt era. So they can I actually like things. that look. And you won't see the grill because you'll be sitting inside looking at the beauty of iDrive 8 displayed across this enormous widescreen. And by the way, all connected by an integrated 5G. This looks so badass. The Ionic 5 has been one of our favorites in anticipation, and it's going to be a big hit, I'm almost certain. Look at that thing. Yeah, that's yes. the Hyundai. Absolutely that looks gorgeous. cool. It looks really cool. 55,000 base before tax break. That'll take that a looks really... For some people who don't associate that price with a Hyundai, but again, tax break. 300 miles of range. That's like the Overall, future of the hot hatchback, in my opinion. Perhaps the most credible competitor to the Tesla Model Y as we were shopping for your car. And if you want a slightly different take on the Ionic 5, go check out the Kia EV6. I, you know what, though? Same basic underpinnings and structure, but done with the Kia language instead. Now, let's say you want something a little bigger and a little more conventional, to be honest, compared to the Ionic 5 and the EV6. Then you'd look at the Kia Sportage, the 2023 model, which I think carries over some nice design cues from the very premium and popular Kia Telluride. And when it arrives in late 22, with a potential plug-in hybrid powertrain, now it's kind of perfect. Now, when you pull up alongside the next generation of the Mitsubishi Outlander with a plug-in hybrid powertrain, you probably won't even know it. So Mitsubishi nailed it. The they nailed vehicle. it. That's okay, because that little hidden secret delivers 54 miles of all-electric range, at least on the European cycle. Let's say it's 40 or 45, but it's U.S. rated. Still, for a pretty big vehicle to get that kind of range, and enough range for many owners to drive all electric most days. That's pretty impressive. The 250 mile range VW ID4 is, of course, not new for 22. However, what is new is they're moving production from Germany to Chattanooga, Tennessee, in a vast plant that's being retooled for this kind of vehicle. What that may that's set up cool. in the future is for it to have more availability and volume, and perhaps let the price come down to its current 40 plus. To maybe something in the mid to upper 30s as a base. That is a big psychological hit. Absolutely. That will be awesome. Then there's the Volvo C40 Recharge. Not the XC40. The C40 is a little coupe crossover. Great looks. Unless you find them polarizing. It's I like it. definitely audacious. But this is a vehicle that is pure electric. Unlike the XC40, which can be had as a recharge version or not. And it's also a long list of firsts for Volvo. It's the first Volvo that can be had only as an electric. And I'm talking Volvo here, not Polestar. It's the first one that will only be oh, that interior. a sustainable vegan interior. Yes. And it's the only Volvo that will be sold only through an online portal. About 225 miles of range for this one. Volvo, you nailed it. This I love this caddy too. This, this is caddy is so lyric. impressive to me. A lot of folks asking, that's a Cadillac? I like look to at look that. at the inside look at that. first, as good as the outside looks, because that cabin is exactly how you're supposed to do a widescreen interior. Other car makers, take note. Now, the launch edition is Look at these lights. Out. Lyrics supposedly start at 60. Look, oh, my gosh, bro. Yet. But as That's they hot. flood more into the market down the road, this should be a pretty interesting value play based on the quality that I'm seeing in the overall interior. And Cadillac, interior. stepping this it up. This vehicle has 300 miles of range and, of course, will feature the latest version of GM's excellent Super Cruise. 
semi-self-driving car. Now, over at Mercedes, EQ means electric car. <laughs> in this case, the EQB is what you look for. Well. This looks really like cool. This have, does look a, really cool. Kind of a high top sneaker look. Kind of a big utilitarian rear with a squared off set of shoulders. It's a handsome, chunky look. When you get inside, I love I'm the color quite too. Impressed by the way they've done the widescreen. I love the the, the vents. For a while, it looks a little tacked on, to be honest. Certainly compared to that Cadillac we just saw. And I never got used to the weird. I love character. it. I love it. There'll be an EQB with a 300 or a 350 variant. And obviously that doesn't refer to readers of any kind. So the 350 is a higher performance, but they're both dual motor all-wheel drive. It's just a matter of which performance you want to write on. Audi's Q4 e-tron should combine entry-level luxury. That looks cool, too. Coupe roof line version. Available augmented reality. That's exciting. Head-up display. And about a $45,000 base price. So huge amounts of options mean you can just never. Now, Jeep's not a name you often associate with electrification, but it's getting there. The new Jeep Grand Cherokee 4XE coming out in 20 That looks really good, plug too. plug-in hybrid version of the next-generation Grand Cherokee looks really good to our eye. And it's available in some trim levels that you normally had to go chase via a Wagoneer. 25 miles of range on a charge before you have to kick over into combustion mode. And I think 470 pound-feet of total torque. Could make this one a very interesting, powerful, articulated off-road car. The Polestar 3 will certainly be the most mainstream model from this sibling brand of Volvo we've ever seen. And its CEO says that once you get a look at it, you'll see a vehicle that defines the look of SUVs in the electric era. To my eye, it mostly confirms that everyone's doing the same look on SUVs in the electric era. But no matter... It looks good. It does. You can look for a high-ish 370 or so miles from a charge, partly because when you've got a $70,000 base MSRP, you can build that in. Inside, expect the usual elegant Volvo modernity and probably some of the most impressive semi-autonomy on the market. The that Genesis color. GV60, that color. One that a lot of folks probably don't know about, know that it's coming, even know about Genesis. No, but Genesis is, is cool. It's a, perhaps a polarizing look at a crossover in the electric space. That's hot. You either love that or hate the fact that it's got some real quirky design. That's hot. Look up around the face and the curvaceousness there, or look at the horizontal split headlights and taillights. Those have become a Genesis sort of a hallmark, although they remind me of Sony Buick from the 90s. Inside, I think they've done a less excellent job of integrating the now de rigueur widescreen single dash display, but don't miss the rotating crystal orb that is the shifter. If I had not seen this, I would never have believed it. Next level. The Alfa Romeo Tonale is sort of a RAV4 with an Italian accent as Alfa continues to try and figure out who they are and who they're for. It'll be offered with a plug-in hybrid variant, as we understand it. Don't look for a full battery electric on this one. And that plug-in variant may also cross the hallway over to Dodge and become their plug-in compact crossover, since they're all under the same roof at Stellantis, the company that sounds like my Lanta. If you never, ever want to see a I car think this like is my pick. Ballet, this is my then, pick. You probably have to get a Fisker Ocean, the Ooh. latest interpretation of the Fisker name in the auto industry. This one, as you can tell by the name, is all about a sustainability message. Aside from being a, an electric vehicle, it's got a large... I love that. Sunroof ...that could add, you know, a couple thousand miles of range all year. Yes. With trickle charging and a big battery. Vegan interior, as you might imagine. Recycled plastics inside as well. That's Dude, that's awesome. In the car instead of in the ocean. Yes. And this has the only rotating infotainment screen I think we've ever spotted inside of a car. 250 to 300 miles of range, pretty good range. Now, the next generation Honda HRV does not arrive in the U.S. in 24, not until 23, but I bring it up in this piece because a full battery electric version has just launched in China for 22. Dude, and that paint job. We'll at least get a plug in version of 23. My if goodness. Not the battery version as well. So we're Next level. seeing the debut of a full electric HRV, just not here yet. And finally, there's Rivian's SUV, the R1S, not the truck they're better known for. This is a more or less full-size SUV, good-sized vehicle. Uh, I'd say it's going into production just now because they did deliver two in 2021, but two. 
and one was for the CEO, one was for the CFO. So production does begin this year to join the truck that is already in limited production. But when you see one, it tends to be an event. Here it is. Now nobody buys it. Buy sedans or coupes anymore, right? Well, tell a couple of smart companies that that are doing them as electrics. The BMW i4, for example, this would be basically a four series as an electric sedan. You can see it hasn't varied too far from the BMW. Nailed it. Nailed it. Again, we'll see that they will. Nailed but it. But this is a critical car for a company that made its name on performance sedans. Yes. Yeah, I know, the crossovers and SUVs are all the rage now, but BMW has to always have a strong performance sedan brand as well, and this vehicle is now going to carry that into the future. So the i4 is one to watch. Very exciting. Mercedes EQE will be just a tad bigger than the current conventional E-Class, but it's a clean sheet new car to go with its pure EV underpinnings. No, that looks good. pretty teardrop of a thing with a long, arching four-door roof. This optional hyperscreen dashboard that it shares wow. with the top drawer EQS has set a new high watermark. It's gorgeous. Displays. The Genesis G8 this looks is good already too. one of our favorite sleeper luxury sedans with conventional power. Absolutely. The full electric version has been launched in China, which indicates we might get it here fairly soon. We expect it to have the high 200s in terms of miles of range. And Hyundai's rather smart charging system, which is able to adapt itself to different voltages of fast chargers, you may find, allowing you to plug into more of them than maybe another car. Nice. No, that's awesome. We've got a couple exotics for you. These are not normally thought of as electric cars, but it's happening there, too. The Ferrari 296 GTB returns a V6 to the middle of a Ferrari for the first time since the Dino. We're going back decades. But of course, in this case, coupled with a plug-in hybrid powertrain component. This is a very different situation than the Dino. 820 horsepower total combined, and obviously a significant amount of that horsepower and torque comes from the snap of an electric motor. That's going to be different than getting 820 any other way. And there's probably more grain in the V6. Yes. As is the beautiful styling on this thing. Certainly from the front, I think it's the prettiest thing Ferrari makes this side of the Roma. And finally, Maserati may launch its first full EV in the next generation Gran Turismo, possibly this year. It's so speculative, we don't know what it would look like terribly well. No specs, but we do know what it's going to sound like. So, um, no, I'm excited for cars that finally embrace the concept of using a gas and electric engine to push a car to the limits. I think once that is embraced, that's gonna be like, in the mainstream, I think, you know what? I mean, why not? Okay, I'm stopping. Thank you. I love you.